Doom is known for its fast-paced action and incredibly smooth movement. The design in the original Doom showcased this perfectly and was a masterclass in how to construct levels. When Doom 2 came around, the developers were getting much more ambitious and innovative in the way they formulated stages. Oftentimes, this led to some amazing levels that are regarded as some of the franchise's best. But sometimes, it resulted in experiences that were downright frustrating and seemed to go totally against the spirit of the game. Doom 2 hosts one particular level that was almost universally hated by players, and that level is the Chasm. It provides some of the slowest and most annoying sections Doom Guy has ever had to deal with. We are forced to crawl across tiny platforms barely a few pixels wide, inching our way slowly and painfully along beams where a fall will result in certain death. For casual players, this was hell. But for speedrunners, it produced an exciting challenge that has resulted in some of the most respected speedruns in Doom history. In this video, we will go back and watch speedrunners slowly but surely master this perilous terrain over the course of many years. We will also learn a couple of advanced Doom speedrunning techniques along the way. Techniques that I didn't cover in my previous Doom video. So sit back and relax as we take a look at some of the most precise speedruns in Doom history. As with most Doom speedruns, we will focus on the ultra-violence speed category. This is played on the ultra-violence difficulty setting, and our only objective is to finish the level as fast as possible. In order to familiarize ourselves with the level, we are going to go all the way back to the beginning. The oldest known official record on Chasm was set on the 28th of February 1996, a time of 1 minute and 58 seconds. The player went by the name Demon Lord, and Demon Lord was instrumental in advancing strategies on this level. In the first phase of this speedrun, Demon Lord collects a rocket launcher and shotgun as well as some ammo. It's important to point out that in these individual level speedruns, we always start out with the pistol only. We aren't allowed to carry weapons over from previous maps. It's actually possible to avoid taking this path through the nukage pool, but that requires getting a blue keycard which is much slower. In order to mitigate some of this damage, Demon Lord grabs the radiation shielding suit. Now we get to the first balance beam section. These beams are extremely small and obnoxiously difficult to traverse quickly. You can see just how careful Demon Lord was being when moving along. He actually takes a slight detour here to grab more ammo. Taking time to collect munitions does slow him down, but makes the rest of the level much easier. This is the second balance beam section that leads to the end of the level. But in order to open the door on the other side, we first need to collect the red keycard. A nearby teleportal takes us to the blue room where the keycard lies. In this room, we need to press a series of buttons that lower platforms, eventually granting access to the key. The room is full of demons, and every time a button is pressed to lower a platform, more demons are released. Upon our return, there are a ton of lost souls lying in wait. This is where the guns and ammo that were collected earlier come into play. When we originally teleported here for the first time, these monsters started to spawn into the level. So once we are finished with the blue room, they've all arrived and are ready for our return. Because it takes so long to get through this section, Demon Lord made sure all enemies were dead before even attempting to make it across. Once to the other side, there are only a few more doors to get through before we reach the exit. All in all, this run played it very safe and took no risks. It wouldn't take long for optimizations to be found. Three weeks later, Demon Lord took the record down to 147. The first improvement was skipping the shotgun at the beginning. The second was bypassing the ammo cache in the first balance beam section. This did end up making the end a lot trickier though, and he eventually had to resort to using the weak pistol to dispatch the floating skulls near the end. Two weeks later, the speedrunner Kayuve lowered the record substantially to 1 minute and 30 seconds. You can see that he seemed a bit more comfortable during the first balance beam section, and crossed it much faster than Demon Lord had before. He also used a different strategy near the end of the level. Instead of heading to the blue room to get the red keycard, he would first get to the other side of the toxic pool. 
Reaching the other side triggers a platform to raise up, allowing free movement across the entire area. Now, this did require you to wait around for a few seconds while the platform rose, but it also allowed you to completely ignore the lost souls, as you crossed the pool early before they could become too much of a problem. A very common theme in Doom is that the faster you go, the easier the levels become. Going slowly means more time for monsters to deal damage, and as speedrunners learn to get through stages quicker, it actually lessens the need for straight up combat. With the platform raised, Kaiuve could simply run straight to the exit once returning from the blue room. Upon learning of the new ending strategy, Demon Lord got to work on pushing the record lower. It only took three days to get the record down to 117. Now that you could ignore the lost souls at the end of the stage, it meant that you only really needed to deal with the demons in the blue room. In response to this realization, Demon Lord started collecting much less ammo in the first phase of the run. Four days later, Kaiuve hit back with a new record of his own. He realized that runners were finishing the level with plenty of health, so it didn't really make sense to get the radiation shielding suit while crossing the nukage pool. Skipping this suit only cost 15-20% to health, so it didn't even seem like a big risk to avoid grabbing it. You can also see in the final toxic pool some glimpses of mastery over the narrow pathways. One of the beautiful traditions of Doom speedrunning is the attachment of text files to each demo, containing information about the run and also any player comments. It's awesome to have such a rich history preserved in these files. And given that 110 was the final record that Kai held on this stage, I thought we should take a look at some of his comments. He wrote, Had some luck with the lost souls. They need to look at the wall instead of attacking you. This effect was better shown in my 130. I was not able to make it with less than 10 rockets. Killing the first four pigs with three rockets is not that bad. So four rockets for the three left pigs, two for the two pigs on the other side, and perhaps one for the exit teleport pig. But there always seems to be a gap. And just so you're not confused, pigs are a different name for the demons we see in the blue room. They can also be called pinkies. You can see in his comments that he mentions a gap in the demons near the exit teleportal in the blue room. That would allow the runner through without the use of rockets. Kai specifically mentions though that he felt he needed at least 10 rockets to deal with the demons. This shows that some thought was definitely going into the possibility of collecting less ammo, which would ultimately be faster. Kai's record of 110 would only last four days. On the 18th of April, Demon Lord took the record down to 108. Over a two-month period in early 1996, Demon Lord and Kai had taken the record down from 156 to 108. But then in June, the speedrunner Anthe would revolutionize the way the level was played. It all stemmed from another category Doom speedrunners like to compete in, called Pacifist. This is also played on the ultra-violence difficulty setting, but there is one major restriction. You may not shoot or directly damage enemies in any way. Sometimes, not shooting demons doesn't really change the overall strategy or make a significant difference to how fast a level can be completed, but other times, simply finishing the level at all can be a massive challenge. For example, only a single person has ever completed Map 2 Underhauls under pacifist rules. It took until 2017 to be done, and the run took over 20 minutes. In the case of Chasm, it actually turns out that trying to get through the level without killing monsters is significantly faster. While the demons in the blue room do pose some problems, it is indeed possible to navigate them without firing a single shot. You just need to know where to run and be very fast. Ignoring monsters meant that runners could skip getting the rocket launcher at the beginning of the stage, saving a lot of time. On the 1st of June 1996, Anthe took the record below one minute for the first time, with a run of 58 seconds. Without any weapons, he needed to spend a slight amount of time avoiding demons in the blue room, but overall, it was actually much faster than trying to kill them. Two weeks later, Demon Lord would achieve a run of 56 seconds. Throughout this entire progression, we've seen some pretty major strategy developments. But still, those tiny walkways were a huge sticking point, 
Runners were still very uncomfortable and timid when traversing those dangerous sections. In the attached text file for his run of 56 seconds, Demon Lord simply stated, This almost drove me mad. I hate those bloody ledges. The record of 56 seconds would hold strong for the better part of a year. In May of 1997, Anthe would again optimize the strategy and take the record lower, achieving a time of 48 seconds. Previously, we had seen runners cross the final toxic pool before heading to the blue room in order to raise the platform. Now, Anthe headed to the blue room first and simply hoped that the floating skulls wouldn't be too much of a problem when he came back. After a year of practice, Doom players were starting to get much more adept at navigating the tight ledges, which ultimately made avoiding the enemies a lot easier. Still, some luck was needed to get through smoothly. Anthe was pretty happy with this record, and in his notes, he pondered. Will Daniel be able to beat this again? I'm not sure about that. One or two seconds faster is possible, I think. The last part I ran with some wet feet. It seems as though Anthe slightly underestimated Demon Lord here, as in June of 1997, just shy of two months later, Demon Lord did beat the record. But not by just one or two seconds, but by three seconds, taking the record down to 45. And just so you can become a bit more familiar with how the strategy is progressing, we will take a look at this run in full. It's here that we started to see moments that would somewhat resemble more modern Doom speedrunning. Techniques such as backing up to build momentum through doors were being implemented. And for the first time, we actually see some legitimate strafe running being used on some of the thicker ledges, where previously, runners would only face directly forwards to make it easier to balance. Run strafing is of course much faster, but also much harder on these walkways. Demon Lord's 45 would be the last time he held the record on Chasm, but it seems like he had finally made peace with those walkways. In his comments, he reflected on his journey. The secret is to really love those ledges, and I do. The struggle on this level started a long time ago. I think the first results were close to two minutes. Later, Kouve and myself had an internal battle, and the best times we ever reached back then were 120, I think. At this time, we thought we were clever by taking only the rocket launcher and then running for the exit. But then came Anthe, leaving everything behind and reaching the exit with only the pistol. So we all followed him, and I made a recording of 56 around a year ago. I thought it was to be the best ever recording of this level. Now Anthe made a new and incredible run of 48. This was, however, before I started to love ledges. All of them and they me. They let me through with a time of 45. On the 9th of January 1998, the Chasm record was dropped again to 44 by legendary Doom speedrunner Thomas Pilger. This is the same person that achieved the first 9 on Hangar that we discussed in my previous Doom video. The strategy used in Thomas's 44 was essentially the same with some slightly better execution. There was a pretty significant error when trying to open the red keycard door, which cost Pilgo around a second. Overall though, the run was starting to become pretty smooth. Theoretically, the level still had a lot of room to take the record lower, but in order to do so, speedrunners would need to start taking much more risk crossing those ledges. This wouldn't be a task for Thomas Pilgo though, and in his comments, he confessed, I really, hate those ledges. 
April of 98 is when we first saw a speedrunner really start to push the limits of the catwalks. Esko Koskima blew the previous runs out of the water with a 41. In his run, you can see clear as day that a huge leap was made in traversing the second ledge section. The 41 even had obvious blemishes elsewhere in the run, confirming it could be taken lower. And in May of 98, Esko did just that and achieved a run of 40 seconds. Even without any strategy changes, Esko was able to lower the record by 4 seconds, simply by implementing better movement. But the level still had more to give. By 1999, skills had improved considerably, and in June, the runner Henning Skogsto took the record to 39. This was the only record Henning would achieve on Chasm, and it would stand for two months. In August of 1999, a monster would awaken, and that monster's name was Sedlo. Sedlo was the player that would truly take Chasm into the modern era. In August, he lowered the record to 38. The run looked almost flawless, and Sedlo himself doubted his ability to do better. In his comments, he pondered. Is this possible to beat? I really don't know. For me, it definitely isn't. I spent too many hours to get this one. But there was one key time save that no runner to date had dared attempt to implement. The ledges in the first balance beam section are ridiculously thin, and not a single player had been able to successfully implement strafe running here. Even though the records were starting to get incredibly optimised, runners still tread pretty cautiously along this catwalk. That is, of course, until Sedlo finally took the plunge and said goodbye to playing it safe. It ended up paying off, as on the 18th of November 1999, Sedlo achieved this run. Afterwards, Sedlo would state, God, I was dumb back then. Talking about 38 being optimal, I was too chicken to try strafe running on those first ledges. This time, I practiced a lot. Sedlo's 37 was amazing, but again, it wasn't perfect. He even stated in his attached comments, I was a little shaky on those exit room ledges, but I was pretty nervous after I saw how good I got through the blue room. Somehow I managed to stay on it and finish. Damn, my heart almost stopped when I got stuck on that exit door. But seeing 37 was a relief. I think 36 is impossible. But maybe I'm being stupid again. Who knows? Go for it if you think you can get it. Sedlo referred to slightly slow ledges near the exit and a stuck on the final door. While 37 was good, it seemed as though it may be possible to get 36. He claimed he thought lower wasn't possible, but as history ended up showing, he seemed to change his mind pretty quickly. Over the next year, Sedlo would continue to play for the perfect run. He could see it in his mind, but it would require the greatest Doom speedrun of all time. Sadly, fate dictated that Sedlo would not be the first to achieve the fabled 36. Not because he wasn't the best chasm runner, as he most certainly was, but rather because as is always the possibility in speedrunning, a new strategy was found. The new discovery takes advantage of a technique called wall running. In my previous video, I mentioned that walls and doors will destroy momentum, and this is usually true. But it actually turns out that in specific circumstances, as long as you are going fast enough and running at the correct angle, it's possible to gain speed by running along a wall. The reason this happens is pretty technical, and to be honest, 
I've read the explanation several times and it still goes over my head. But the important thing is that it works. By looking at this example, you'd think that wall running would be used a lot. But there are a couple of key reasons why it's very rarely used in Doom speedrunning. The first is that it can only be used in the directions north or east. The second is that you actually lose momentum while initially entering the wall run. Doom levels are usually extremely complex, so there is a lack of long hallways and passages that would make wall running a viable option. Chasm is an exception though, where wall running may actually be of use for a very specific reason. In December of 2000, Doom runners Adam H and Adam W were discussing the possibility of jumping the gap between the teleportals and the platform near the end of the stage. This would completely bypass the final ledge section. The jump was already known to be possible by using the rocket jump technique, something that we will definitely cover in a future video. But as runners no longer collected the rocket launcher, this obviously wasn't an option. The gap is just barely too wide to jump across. But it turns out that when wall running is used, you can build up just enough speed to make it to the other side. On the 21st of December 2000, Adam H successfully implemented the strategy and was the first person to complete Chasm in 36 seconds. The run was decent, but given that the jump saved at least 2 seconds, it wasn't quite up to the level of the previous 37. Sedlow had already spent a lot of time trying to get 36 before this new strategy was found, and he was committed to his goal. Even though the new technique was quicker, he had a vision, and he stuck to it. He would continue to play Chasm without the new jump. On the 25th of June 2002, Sedlow was successful in his mission. He achieved what many believed to be the greatest Doom speedrun of all time. In his comments, Sedlow stated, So once again, I was wrong. Once I decided to play Doom, I focused only on this map, to finish something I started a long time ago. When Adam H and W discovered the new trick, that didn't affect my way of thinking. Even with the new trick, I stayed on my path, and that was to achieve 36 first. How hard this was, I don't need to explain. I'll let the numbers speak for themselves. The final number of 37s I made was 430. My lowest 37 was of course 37.00, which I got two days before the 36, but I had lots of 37.02s. The first one I got more than a year ago, so you see just how much I had to work to break just a few frames. In the end, I got 36.85, something that shocks me completely. I didn't imagine in my wildest dreams that I could get something like that. The run went perfectly, exactly like I always imagined 36 should look. Three days later on the 28th of June, Sedlow used the new strategy to lower the record down to 34. This is where the record remained until 2004. Most of the run seemed pretty optimal, so it looked like the only way the time could be improved would be to find a strategy optimization. In January of 2004, Sedlow found a much faster way to perform the wall jump. Previously, runners had stepped pretty far back in order to build enough speed to make it across. The jump is a pretty precise thing to navigate as the teleportals are right in the way, making it hard to perform the wall run easily. But Sedlow realised that the jump could be made with a much smaller run-up if SR50 was used. If you haven't watched my previous Doom video and are unsure about what SR50 is, it's basically a slightly faster but much more difficult way of strafing. In order to get a full understanding of how SR50 works and why it's difficult, 
definitely go and watch my video on the 20 year old Doom record that was recently beaten, and you'll get a much better appreciation. Once Doom Guy has returned from the Blue Room, there is just enough space to back up ever so slightly on the teleportal before it gets activated. If the angle is perfect and SR50 is used, the jump can be made, but it is much more difficult to execute successfully. If done correctly, the jump would now save 3 seconds versus using the ledges. On the 23rd of January 2004, Sedlow used the new jump to take the record down to 33, and this is where the record stood for a long time. The run was already seemingly impeccable. There were no obvious flaws, so how could you take the record lower? Well I just mentioned the technique that would do so, and that is SR50. Chasm is a long and precise speedrun, meaning that no player had yet implemented the technique into runs. You already had to worry about navigating the ledges successfully, not getting blocked by demons in the blue room, and making the ridiculously precise wall jump. Adding in further complications was too much for most. There was one speedrunner that was up to the task however, and that was Looper. I talked about Looper and his race with Foreshock Blast to be the first to get 8 seconds on Hangar in my last Doom video. That was relatively recent, taking place from 2017 to 2019, but Looper has been around for many years. In 2011, Looper decided to take aim at Chasm. On the 8th of July, he was able to achieve a 32.94 in the No Monsters category. Most of the run would be identical to the UV speed category, but much better lines would be possible in the Blue Room. With no monsters to block Looper, he could use SR50 all through the Blue Room, which just simply isn't possible normally. Looper did realise though, that if he scraped the bottom of the barrel and used every known technique to save time, 32 would be barely doable on Ultraviolets. In the Blue Room, he would incorporate two new optimizations. The first takes advantage of a mechanic called Elastic Collision. The way collisions work in Doom is really complex and outside of the scope of this video to explain. But to put it very simply, Looper would intentionally run into the first switch as he activated it. Doing this, there was a small chance that he would bounce back off the wall and preserve 50% of his momentum in the opposite direction. The second optimization was taking advantage of a mechanism that enables Doom Guy to preserve momentum when strafe running between an enemy sprite and a diagonal wall. Previously, runners would simply wait for the platform housing the red keycard to be lowered so they could collect it. But Looper would actually use a nearby demon and lodge himself between it and the platform. Doing this, he could continue to strafe run towards the red keycard and start moving as soon as the platform would allow it, while still keeping his speed. He would use SR50 wherever possible, even on the very first ledges. We had gone from seeing runners inching their way along, to now moving across at the maximum speed possible. After two months of grinding, on the 20th of August 2011, which coincidentally was his birthday, Looper would achieve this run. For all intents and purposes, this run is as good as it's going to get with currently known strategies. Eight years later, this is still where the record remains, and it doesn't seem like this will be challenged anytime soon. In December of 2017, Looper came back and confirmed his mastery of the level by achieving a run of 34 seconds in the No Monsters category, without using the final jump. A crazy feat that Looper suggests maybe his greatest run of all time. 
And while we are on the subject of Looper, he has begun streaming recently, so please go and follow him on Twitch and say hello. Looper was instrumental in making this video happen, so please go and show your support. I have also created a second channel. This channel will be for smaller videos, speedrunning news, and commentaries, so go and subscribe. The link will be in the description. A massive thank you to the following absolute legends for supporting me on Patreon. Your donations are helping to keep this channel alive and I really appreciate you. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you in the next video.